So even though when you're doing shoe research out there, keep that in mind. High stack kite with a ton of midsole foam doesn't necessarily mean a soft ride. It's, it's time for a little, little boost in my life. You know what I mean? A little boost. Adidas Ultra Boost 21s arriving on the scene today. And actually, right here are the SL 20.2s. Uh, kind of, I'm going to say very different shoes just based on, well, frankly, the weight. And I'd be shocked if I'm more excited about the Ultra Boost 21 over the SL 20.2s. By the way, did you hear that? Oh man, this is fun. Okay, did you hear that Reebok is now no long, is being sold by Adidas? They bought, so Adidas purchased Reebok in order to compete with Nike 15 years ago. So what would that have been, about 2006? I kind of, re I vaguely remember that happening in the news uh, 15 years ago, and now, Reebok is off on its own. Like they don't have to answer to the big brother of Adidas, as everyone in Europe says. So I'm actually excited for the future of Reebok to see what they're able to do now, branching off on their own. But again, at the same time, who's going to end up buying and purchasing and running the company of Reebok, which has a very long and pretty storied history. I'm excited. All right, Adidas Ultra Boost 21. Let's go lace up here. Just a little update on training, everyone. We are entering into week, this is week four. So next week I'll hit 100 miles for the week, but this week will be 90. And my goal is to get to arrive at 100 miles a week. So that'll be week five in the 13 week training block. That's what the 29.64.4.13, that one three at the end means I'm in a 13 week training block. So this is week four. My goal is to arrive there at 100 miles a week, basically feeling like I'm not working. Like fresh, it's simple, it's easy, I'm not tired. Uh, that is my goal. And then from there, we start to really do some work. And today, I gotta go easy, gotta chill out, gotta go slow, and hopefully, these Ultra Boost 21s encourage me just to bop along, chill out, take it easy, I think they're going to based on what the midsoles feel like right now and the weight. I, I don't even want to tell you how much they weigh. I don't even want to tell you because you might click away from this video. Some people are asking from yesterday's vlog where I talked about the Jaybird headphones. That's right. Uh, what book I finished listening to these headphones in that vlog yesterday. Out of Thin Air. Out of Thin Air. There it is. Highly recommend it. It's all about uh, runners in Ethiopia. Okay. There you go. Oh. I'm okay. Here we go. And we're back. There it is. Eight miles at 8.15 a mile. There it is on your screen in kilometers in the Adidas Ultra Boost 21. Before we dive in, two points real quick. Got to give a shout out to my buddy, Bud. It's his nickname. Uh, buddy from high school who three years ago when I was doing the vlog and we had less than a thousand subscribers on the channel three years ago, I could not afford, you know the story, I could not afford new running shoes. So Bud uh, took it upon himself to buy me a fresh pair of Adidas Ultra Boost. I think it was the 18, okay? So anyway, I will never forget his generosity and kindness in doing that, sending them to me because, again, I couldn't afford new shoes and I was going out onto Craigslist and buying used running shoes. So anyway, I love you, Bud. Thank you for uh, stepping up to the plate to help a friend in 
need. And oh, how the times have changed in the Ultra Boost lineup. Okay, before we dive into the drop, one more point is that, oh, Nelly, yesterday we went live here in the studio. I opened a box, yes, from school. Sketchers, there it is. But I pulled two shoes out of the box, so upper right hand corner, in case you missed that live stream. And I was like, wow, this shoe feels really big in my hands. And sure enough, it is. I don't know. Thank you, Sketchers. So they sent my correct size. This is the Skechers uh, Razor Excess. Ske basically, their maximalist running shoe that's being uh, launched in 2021. I don't think it's even available yet. I'm going to give this pair away on Instagram, okay? So if you're watching early and you wear a size 14, tag me on Instagram. Take a picture of one of your running shoes proving that you wear size 14. Tag me on Instagram in a story. First person to do that wins this fresh brand new pair of Skechers Razor XS, which once again, I don't think is even available yet yeah, there's my name seth james damore on youtube okay just trying to what comes what goes around comes around is that the right way to say it so anyway thank you again bud just trying to spread spread the running shoe love out there okay adidas ultra boost 21 10 millimeter drop from heel to toe 30.5 is what they're officially saying i'll probably just say 30 and 20 on the adidas website 30.5 20.5 there it is on your screen and i couldn't find an accurate women's size 8 i do apologize but in men's size 9 12.7 ounces and in my size we'll just confirm 11.5 ounces oh my goodness let me just jump it over to grams 326 grams there is my score three out of ten Ouch, ouch, ouch. We'll come back to the weight here in a minute. Onto that upper, we're looking at a prime knit upper, which based on the research I've done thus far, is made out of 50% recycled plastic from the ocean. That's kind of cool. Like, you know, nobody likes to see plastic floating around in the ocean. So somehow Adidas is taking it upon themselves to create uppers that are made out of recycled plastic. That's kind of cool. So prime knit uh, upper, I gotta say, was very comfortable. However, Adidas, oh yeah, here's my lockdown. Pretty solid lockdown, it felt good. I was not slipping out of the heel, which I was very nervous. Let's actually do the test right now for the heel counter. Very flexible, I was very nervous. Reminded me, frankly, of the North, Fli uh, North Face Flight Vective from a couple days ago, but sure enough, I was not slipping, so it, it actually was pretty nice through that heel pocket. However, Adidas, in 2021, can we just maybe think about at some point moving past the plastic cage that wraps over the top of our midfoots? I think maybe two or three or four years ago, this was a little more popular um, among, in some other running shoe brands out there. But at this point, I just don't think this plastic cage is necessary. That's how I feel about it. But anyway, the lockdown was solid, but the overall score for the upper did drop down mostly because of that cage. I got to say though, pretty pleased actually with the upper at this point. Moving on to that boost midsole, which based again on the research I've done has 6% more boost material in the midsole compared to the 2020 version. And I almost forgot to mention the 2021, the uh, Ultra Boost 21, has gained an ounce, an entire ounce from the Ultra Boost 20. It's gone up one ounce. That's a lot, okay? And part of it is because they are jamming a lot of boost material into this midsole. So there's my score for the ride and energy return. Despite having this new LEP, it's this black piece of kind of, I'll just call it black piece of plastic. Their new torsions, what they have, used to call their torsion system, uh, under the midfoot, leading into the forefoot. And even with that piece of plastic in there, what they call their LEP, which stands for Linear Energy Push, the ride in energy was not amazing. And maybe it's because of the weight, it's just dragging it down too much. And again, this is just my first impression, not my full review, that'll happen after 50 miles. Ugh, I'm not too excited about what I'm feeling through that push off. And really through, whether I'm doing forefoot or heel striking, I didn't feel a nice high energy return. And let's do it actually. So even though it has a high, high stack, as far as the durometer, it's uh, soft. 
but it is not as soft, everybody. Let me just do it real quick. Sorry, bear with Yeah, it's not as soft as the 1080 B11. So even though when you're doing shoe research out there, keep that in mind. High stack height with a ton of midsole foam doesn't necessarily mean a soft ride, okay? We'll come back to that in a minute as well. Overall score for the midsole looking at six out of 10. On to that outsole, we've got Continental Strategic Outsole Rubber, uh, which I believe this pink and white is like a crystallized rubber, and then a softer, probably some sort of blown rubber under the forefoot. I do like the fact that it's softer under the forefoot. Overall, not an amazing score, a little too much outsole rubber for my liking, but we'll get to the durability prediction here in a minute, and a little bit of a decoupled groove, not much happening under the midfoot into the heel. For the fit, went true to size, no issues there at all. Standard score for the fit onto that comfort. I'm giving it a nice high comfort score. Not putting it into the plush category by any means on the upper, uh, but it's comfortable. It's very comfortable. I think they nailed the padding. Good work, Adidas, nailed the padding uh, on the heel counter, okay, on the inside of the shoe, on the inner lining. The, the padding is, mm, it's quite nice. So good work there, Adidas. And yes, that boost, um, that boost midsole, it's comfortable. No, you know, no denying it at all. Positives and drawbacks, we're looking at durability for my positives, get to that in a minute. And my drawback is the weight, of course. You just, you know, 11.5 ounces in my size is maybe, most likely, probably the heaviest training shoe I've ever worn for roads. Uh, I'm trying to rack my brain real quick. Let me know in the comments, what am I missing? Has there been another shoe I've tested for all of you that's over 11.5 ounces? I will say for a neutral road running shoe. I can't think of one right now. But anyway, let me know in the comments. Durability prediction. I got to go high, 700 plus miles. So it's getting a great score for the durability. I think that boost is not gonna compress too quickly at all. I think this outsole, I mean, if you take this shoe to a thousand miles, please let me know. Please send me pictures, I'd love to see it. I have a feeling this shoe is gonna go forever and ever and ever. All right, moving on to how will I use this shoe? Who is it best for? 100% easy days for me. Come back to that in a minute. And who is it best for? Um, if you wanna buy one shoe, for a long time. You know, you wanna buy one shoe for the next six months of training and you're just putting in miles. You're just enjoying, you know, running. You're not like, let's say, too concerned about going fast. You just wanna, you just wanna get out and run. You know, three, four, five miles a day and you just go in, you know, easy pace, I think, and you only wanna to, want to buy one shoe and you want pretty good high comfort, I think this could be actually a decent option for you. But on to the price point, $179 Adidas, what are we doing there? Three out of 10, I do believe is what I gave it for the score for the price point. For You know, for an easy day shoe, I like to keep it in that $115, really to 125, maybe 130 for an easy day. Like I wouldn't even personally use this as a daily trainer. You're probably wondering why, that's a kind of a long explanation that I've explained in other vlogs, but it's just too heavy for a daily trainer for me. And so here are some other shoes to buy on your screen that are not exact matches to this guy, but they're basically softer and or higher stack height type shoes. Um, the Saucony, most of them are from 20, uh, or they might all be at, no, most of them are from actually 2020, but the New Balance 1080 V11, I actually just did the full review in case you haven't seen it, upper right hand corner, took that to 50 miles and it got a much, much better uh, early score and final score compared to the Adidas Ultra Boost 21. There it is on your screen, 6.25 out of 10, no dice, that's not good. That's low sixes is definitely no good. You wanna be at least approaching seven on my scoring system. Um, so 6.25 is pretty rough and it basically comes down to the price and the weight. So Adidas, how I feel overall about this shoe is that the, you know, the weight went up so much, we're charging way too much. I mean, that's just, that's just way, it's way, way too much. Now, again, if you have the money, you only wanna buy one shoe for the next six months of training. And I have said in the past, I will say this. So don't completely write this shoe off in the sense that 
I'm actually okay with training in heavier shoes. For example, like the Saucony Hurricane 23, I tested last week and I took it to higher speeds. A little bit of my philosophy in training and running shoes is that if you train in heavier running shoes and then you put on the, you know, the Nike Next Percent on the starting line in your next race, you're gonna feel fast. And I, I my theory is that um, you're gonna be strengthening your legs if you're training in a shoe like this for months and months and months, and then you go out and buy a lightweight racing shoe. I think you're gonna fly personally. That's kind of my approach to rate to training versus racing shoes. So I'm actually not crazy afraid of this type of weight, but again, it's uh, I don't like the fact that it trended an entire ounce in the wrong direction, if you know what I mean. And here are the final quick specs on your screen. Soak it in, soak it in. Okay, I will say one last thing. If you're a rugby player, or maybe you're a former basketball player or volleyball player, you're just like tall or big, you know, like there's some uh, weightlifters, former weightlifters that are transitioning to endurance sports, but they weigh 250, 270, 300 pounds because they're getting out of the weight room and transitioning a little bit more so into, I've seen it a lot in the trail running scene and ultra running scene. Um, this could be good just to kind of baby your legs as you, um, I'm all, oh, I love this topic. Okay. Bear with me as your body adapts and, um, oh, what's the word I'm looking for? Adapts. Adapts is the word, but adaptation, that's the word. As you are adapting and you're going through that adaptation process of weightlifting to kind of, I'll just say, pounding on the pavement, this could actually help you in that transition to other running shoes out there that are lighter, peppier under step. So just want to put that out there. I'm not saying, I'm not writing this shoe off completely. Um, it could work for some people out there. Okay. All right. There you go. Question of the day. Um, oh, I, I always have questions about running shoes. So I'm trying to branch out a little bit more, kind of try and get to know all of you better out there. Thanks for answering down in the comments. Question of the day. This is, I don't know what, how I thought of this, but here we go. Uh, what is a, <laughs> I don't know how I thought of this. What is a movie scene that always gives you goosebumps, okay? I don't know where that came from, but like, is there a movie, you know, let us know the movie and the movie scene where you're like, oh gosh, that was just a great movie scene. Especially as I love filmmaking, I love cinematography. I mean, there's so many, oh my goodness. I mean, between The Godfather and Braveheart and um, Miracle, oh my God, I could go on and on. There's a lot of good ones out there. So anyway, thanks for hitting it up down below. Adidas Ultra Boost 21 first impression blog in the books. I do think I will get it to 50 miles, but it might just take a little bit. So bear with me on that full review. And we're gonna toss it to, I don't even know. We might toss it to the story about this shoe back here on the wall. Um, I'll try and find this one, just in case you haven't seen that story before. All right, everyone, see beauty, work hard, and love each other. See you tomorrow.